A lot of you have been enjoying the Raiding Climb series of E4, and I decided to do one with the black pieces, so welcome to part one. I'm going to be playing Twitch subs. Shout out to them, they're also on the screen. Twitch, say hi to YouTube. YouTube, say hi to Twitch. Uh, time format is three minutes and five second bonus, and all of these people will get their rating points refunded at the end of the climb. I'm going to be focusing primarily on setups, so King's Indian, as well as E6, B6 in some games. Uh, first player up is... X Warn X. I got nothing else to say except that if you're here, make sure that you're in live chess. All right. E4. Now E5 is pretty standard, but I'm gonna show you how to play the King's Indian. So first move is D6. Normally two pawns in the center is the way they go. Now you play Knight F6. So first things first, you're attacking this pawn, uh, and this oftentimes prevents against you know random silly stuff. Now G6. So he protects the pawn. So far so good. Most people here put the second knight into the center of the board. Um, if they win, do, do they get a refund? Yeah, I get a refund. Okay, now we're, we're solid. Now, the hardest thing for King's Indian players to deal with is the early pawn push E5, which attacks the knight, which hopefully we will get at some point here in part one. Um, okay, now castles. His setup right now, you can't really take advantage of anything. Hey. Don't tell YouTubers to leave a mean comment. They're good at that already. We got it. We got a good YouTube. All right, this is good. He's playing well. Put my bishop out on g4. This is good. The idea of this is maybe to bring the bishop down this way. So the way you learn is you watch this series and you pick up on the general patterns. Uh, now, normally you take. I'm actually very happy making this trade because when he takes with the pawn, he's damaging his structure. I'm not really sure why he's thinking so long. Please don't take. Please go queen e2. I'd be very happy with that. Okay. Yeah, it was a very long thought. Now, you're trying to go e5. I'm going to finish my development with the move knight c6, and then I'm going to go e5. He castles queenside, so we have our first very exciting King's Indian. Now we play e5. There's a lot of different ways to play this position. Um, you can play a6, b5. Uh, that move... Hmm. Well, it's a fair trade. What if I just take in the center, though? Now, making this trade is, is good right now because I will reactivate this bishop. This trade is good, also, because I will reactivate my bishop. Now, I have this lined up, but anywhere I move the knight, just moves his queen. So probably look at c6 here. Try to kick this bishop out and open up a line for my queen. So let's play c6. Stacks the bishop. Bishop h6 check, guys, is not a very good move because you just play king b1. However, I am looking at the possibility of doing this in the future. So he plays this. Now d5 takes. I can take with the knight, and then I have a discovered attack. Actually, it does look pretty good. This bishop is very strong, though, so maybe we go b5. Um... It's also the strongest 400 I've ever played. <laughs> Just gotta say. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go d5, yeah. Attacking his bishop, hitting his pawn, and then I have this little trick here where my bishop now from the corner hits his queen. I'm probably gonna take this next. I am pinned, though, and he does have some pressure on this knight. And he hangs his queen. Okay, well, there's the 400 kicking in. He forgot about my bishop. That King's Indian bishop will win you a lot of material. Uh, in uh, in your games. Let's hope he takes this pawn. Gives away his rook. Just move the queen out of the way. It's a good move. Okay, d8. Now we consolidate and we convert this position. We win the game. Do. Mm, that's actually a mistake. So rook d7. That's a mistake because he had discovered check. And he could take my rook. I play here. I'm, see, I'm always looking for checks for him as well. Um, and I'm just gonna double up. It's gonna, it's gonna take a while to win this, especially if he plays... Well, now, see, that the problem is that now the rook takes. Queen f4 is winning? No, queen f4 is a free queen for, for, for him. Are you guys trying to make me lose? Is that what's going on here? And, by the way, the name is This Kid Crushed You because we're playing the King's Indian. Okay, let's not lose our queen. Let's take all his pawns. Now, Warren should resign the game. I don't, I just, I'm just saying that in case he's watching the stream. In reality, don't resign here. Uh, force the guy to convert the position. Take. Like I said, it, you know, 
No need to resign. Just play moves out. Keep the game going. Okay, I'm going to simplify here. No need to do this, but now I have an extra rook. And okay, well, that's easy now. He's cut out. Okay, he resigns. Good win. Plus two. Solid. Um, so, a couple things early. Uh, he played very well. He played very well. I mean, if everybody plays like this, it's going to be a very long climb. Now, he immediately went for long castles and bishop h6. And in general, the best thing to do here, uh, make this trade, get fully developed. Um, we'll see what happens if, if takes or push later. Uh, but that's generally how you play. c6, and then you try to go for queen a5. Another move I had here, maybe not d5, is something like this. Losing this pawn is not so dangerous. I mean, it's not necessary, but uh, because you can create an attack on the queen side with b5, b4. Or I could have played a6 instead of c6, which wouldn't have weakened this pawn. But what made all of this possible is the fact that my bishop was so strong targeting the center. Did you play well for your elo? Yeah, you were the strongest 400 I've ever played in my life. That's not sarcasm. That was crazy. Okay. Pedro, here we go. D4, D6. So maybe he'll play a London. Let's see if he plays a London. Okay, we got a London player. So it shows you the, the flexibility and the power of this setup versus the London system. A lot of people don't know what to do against uh, the King's Indian when they play London. Because they have to operate with the move knight e5. That's a very common move in the, in the London, and they can't get it. That's just the thing. They, they don't get it in this opening. And I'm going to show you a little trick which he might fall for. Instead of bishop g4, bishop g4 is good. What is that? He played that so fast, I'm like inclined to believe that's some sort of preparation or something, but I, I don't... What? 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 What is this? What are we doing? What? What is that? I'm so confused. If he just goes back, why didn't he just go... What? I don't know. Oh no, and he blunders. He blunders the legendary fork. This is the legendary London fork that they fall for. Rook e8 and e5, and you attack the bishop, and then you push, and you win a piece. Remember this. If you're going to play the King's Indian against London player, uh, you will get this a lot. You will get this a lot. You will fork their pieces in the center of the board. Um, he tried to play Jobava London? I, 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 I don't know what he tried to do, honestly. Um, okay. So, now we're up a piece. This is very common. If you play King's Indian versus London, and you play for this e5, e4, you're going to get it a lot. It's going to happen a lot. And um, you're going to beat people. It's just what's going to happen. Let's take the bishop. Yes, he has this and this. Okay, now queen trade. He still has this. I'm leaving that option open for him. Now defending this is kind of hard. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have played like this. What I should have done, see, I probably should have played something like knight h5 and made him make this trade. But now he has a little bit of counterplay, so I'm going to play the move knight d5, which defends this from his knight, and I'm very happy to make a, a trade. Uh, so I'm happy with this. Now, had he played e4, attacking my knight to make me move, I wouldn't have moved. I would have counterattacked his knight. That was my point. That he would have taken my knight, but I would have taken his knight. Now, I shouldn't have even allowed this. I shouldn't have even allowed this. This, this is already too much. And here, I should keep this knight here. I should kick his knight out first. But I rushed in, and you know we have this now. But still good for me. I uh, didn't take that for some reason. But I will put my rooks like this. So what do we have? We have um, a bishop for two pawns. And yeah, Jobava London players who are trying to go with the c7 square will not be able to do that because you have a pawn on d6. So we good. The rook c8? It's a good move. Very solid. Uh... You respect that I admit mistakes? Um, yeah. No, I mean, I'm, I have to play fast, and sometimes that, that involves errors, of course. Okay, so now I can take, and that's probably the best thing to do, just pick up a pawn. If I pick up this pawn, we are winning. Okay, bishop takes a2. Rook takes a2 was fine, but then I stopped defending this pawn. So bishop a2, and I'll bring the pawn up. Actually, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll play bishop d5 next, depending on what he does. Ah, 
He created a getaway for his king. So now I will move this, because before he moved and he took, there was back rank checkmate. The way this is working now is that I am just up a full bishop now with two passed pawns on this side. Uh, but my, my, it's still a process to win this. 1200 Andy should definitely play Kings in. Why not? The whole point of this climb. I, oh, what am I doing? Wait, I completely hallucinated. Oh my goodness. I just hallucinated that my rook was here protecting this bishop. Wait, I'm, I'm tripping. I'm, I'm on something. Okay, well now it's a more even game. All right. Now it's a more even game. That was crazy. Raid climb, by the way. I literally just thought my rook was there defending. And I was like, all right, Bishop F8. Oh, he blunders. Thankfully, he blunders right back. How did he blunder here? Low key. It's not even... How did he blunder here? Big blunder here by the opponent. Huge blunder. Huge mistake. Mis big mistake he can't recover from. Totally can't recover from. Has no way to recover from this. No way. Obviously not watching the stream either. Good thing he's thinking. He's really confused here. Oh man, big, 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 big blunder here. He is reeling. Yeah, bishop d6 was a strange move, but though at least like he can bail out here, but he doesn't need to play bishop d6. Uh, it's, it's a very complicated position, actually, once I blunder the bishop, because material is equal, but I have two passed pawns, which is very dangerous for him. But he should be pushing his pawns. That's what he should have been doing. He should not... I mean, he rushed... I mean, of course, you, it's different. You know, you're playing someone who you know is like streaming and is in IMs and is not an 800... But when you're playing against folks your own level, you know, your bishop's great. Okay, and he, and he finally thinks for a while, uh, and he doesn't find the move. Bishop a3 was attacking my rook. If I took his rook, he would take mine. So, now we take. My god, I can't believe that happened. Ridiculous. That was such a crazy blunder. <laughs> uh, what a blunder. What a blunder. Okay, check. Now he can go here and lose his pawn, or he can go here thinking he defends his pawn, but get mated. Let's see what he does. Good move. That was his best move, actually. But he will lose a lot of pawns now, and we will win. Wow, that was not a good game. I mean, it was, except for the one blunder, but wow, 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 wow. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's just move and defend. If this, I will take. Uh, he's got too few pawns here, even if he wins my bishop. Push. Push. Push, push, queen, stop the pawn, push the next pawn. Easy, easy, easy. He'll probably resign. Nope, no resign. Ooh, we'll take this pawn, push this pawn. Okay, this is easy now. Second queen, make sure it's not stalemate, and mate in one. Or you can ladder mate. That was a good game. You can ladder mate like this. It was a good game. So... Common pattern is you you might lose your queen. Uh, sorry, peace, not queen, not queen, not queen, not queen. This fork very early e5. Be careful, London players. Uh, and you know we were we were smooth sailing from there for the most part, except the blunder of the piece. Luckily, he gave it back to me. But that was a good game. I mean, I can't say much. All right, here we go. What does this guy have for me? He's going to be e4, d4. What's going to happen? I had plays d4. Now guys, if you're London players and you see that the guy before me plays the London and it doesn't go well, just play the London. Because it's what you play. You know, you the high chance that it, it won't be a victory in this case. And, you know, we do appreciate you playing. The cool thing is that when you're a Twitch sub, you get to participate in stuff like this. Uh, I want to reward my subscribers over on Twitch. Because, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, you help me out. And I get to use a command to play black every game rather than sitting in the pool waiting for an opponent. So. Okay, play knight c6, and now notice he has no pieces here, so I don't quite have e5. But this is still the setup that we want to go for. Maybe one, one day, okay, so he plays like this. I'm going to go for e5 right away. He's not developed his knight, which is really weird. 
But I think he's just trying to not get forked, which is why he put the bishop here. Is this raiding climb going on YouTube? What do you think? Don't tell him, YouTube viewers. What do you think? You think this is going to go? G5. Let's attack the knight. Uh, excuse me, the bishop. I don't know the names of pieces. If he takes, I'm happy. Okay, he doesn't take. This is a rare position. So from here on out, what do I do? What do I do? Can I take a rook e8 or d5 hitting his bishop? Actually, this is like a rare case where I can put two pawns in the center. So let's do that. Because he, he's kind of left his pieces there to be attacked. So I'll put two pawns in the center. Um, but, you know, you can play g5, you can take, play rook e8, play knight a5. Okay, he plays here. Uh, let's... Um, oh, develop a bishop, put my rook in the center. Let's put the rook in the center. Do a lot of different stuff. Okay. Now I'm going to attack. And he actually has to put his knight back. This is sort of the thing. If you let black overrun the center like this, it's, it's not going to go well. It's not going to go well. But he's very solid. That's the thing about the London is if you don't fight the London very aggressively... D5 hanging? He can't, can't take with the knight because you lose the queen? Um, yes. If I take with the knight, I lose my queen. But if I take with my queen, I don't lose my knight or my queen. So, if you are right. But I don't have to play like that. Okay, now, kicking his bishop away... What is going on with Spotify? Okay. There we go, that's better. Um, haven't moved this bishop yet. Let's put the bishop right here. It's not the best move. I probably should be unpinning myself, but we'll see what he does. I don't know what he's going to do yet, so... Now, this position is super closed. So in a super closed position... You gotta look for pawn breaks. Okay, he does this. Let's play g5, kick his bishop back. Now, yes, it's not good to push pawns in front of your king, but look at his pieces. Can his pieces really get to my king? Not really. Long thought here. Big thought here. Okay, goes goes here. Um Tough position, man. <laughs> Very closed. Tough to come up with an idea that would be relatable for a viewing audience. Uh, I'm gonna go h5 because that actually does threaten to trap the bishop. Very rarely does this happen. Normally there's no knight here and he can just go back. That's also protected. So he's... Oh, that's a great move. I don't want to take because then he just reactivates his bishop. So let's play g4. Really taking space here, but this bishop will survive. Probably also was not the best move. I probably should have went like knight g4. Uh, this is a very tough position. I'll tell you. That's an idea. Yeah, the problem for him is that even though this position is very solid, he doesn't have the ability to move any pieces at all. I just realized also we don't have a profile photo. Oh no, the first mistake. That was my idea to hit his bishop. Also, when he takes, I don't actually have to take right away. I don't think. I can play rook b8. Might be overkill. But I do just want to show you guys tactical patterns. I'll just take, though. That's the simplest. Gonna go here. That attacks my knight. I can move my knight. I can protect my knight. Not with this which is highlighting my rook. 
Like with the queen. That would be cool. Or that. Let's see if that happens. I mean, I just he just can't move pieces. Like he played very solidly, but he didn't he didn't he didn't do much. Ah, he brings the queen back. Good move. Okay. Take, and now we have broken through on this side of the board. I could have also taken this, but, you know, he's, uh, he's doing his thing. He's, he's being solid. Also, if anybody is confused why it's 800 plus, but I'm playing 600s, because I, have, I had a sub who was 440, a couple subs under 700. Like, you know, we're not, we're not gatekeeping ratings here. I'm saying my rating is 800, and I'm trying to push beyond 800 in this climb. Flavortown, thank you for the sub. Belforu, thank you for the sub. Bel Horfu. Bel Horfu. I am dyslexic. Okay. Take. Hitting the queen. Rook is in. Rook is in. Oh, no, that's not good. I mean, I lose a rook this way, but... At least I pick up some pieces. Now let's play queen here. At this point, once my opponent's position has been seriously damaged, you need to find a way to mobilize as fast as possible. I'm gonna play bishop h6, threatening check, takes, take the bishop. And we are well on our way to winning the game. And pre-move this, actually, because his king is deflected from the defense of the bishop. Pick up the pieces, that made us unstoppable, GG. But that was a very tough game, and what made it really tough was the position was super closed. Now, if I wanted to open the position, I should have done it earlier with a move like pawn takes d4, which you can do, uh, but it's a long game. London is a solid opening, you cannot beat it that fast, you just can't. For this next game, I'm going to play e6, b6. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. Okay. Go. Next game I will play e6, b6. Or, how about this? Let's play King's Indian for one more game. And then I'll, for the next half I'll play e6, b6. Okay. So far, so good. Go here. Don't really know what he's playing yet. Why is it called King's Indian? Don't know. I actually don't know. This is interesting. Okay, so he's playing his F pawn out. Now, if they play like this, I actually don't think that this is so great, and anytime you see a bishop against the king's indian on c4, I recommend c6. I'll tell you later. So you, you can't just spam this e5 thing, you know, where you play knight c6, bishop That's where the king's indian becomes bad. If, they, if you spawn a bishop on c4, I would go after it, just like I did in the last game. Last game, I played, you know, d5 at some point. This bishop can't really stand here. I'm gonna go d5, and it's like, well, Levy, you already played d6, what about this? Yeah, but I didn't know what he was gonna do. So, fighting like this is good, because if he takes this pawn, his f-pawn is sort of without a friend. And, um... So he takes, I take back with the pawn, I could also take back with the knight. Now we've transformed the position a little bit, and now it's just a normal game of chess, really. But I just want you guys to, like, fight against this bishop quickly with c6, if you get the opportunity. Now the bishop is stuck. And it's not very powerful. And then you can play like this. And when you trade this, you'll replace the e-pawn on e6. And notice you'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Every pawn you have will be on a light square fighting against the light squared bishop because you've traded your own. Knight e5. Does that attack anything? I don't believe so. But now I can't play bishop g4. I will still play knight c6 if he takes. That's fine.
There it is. Alright. Very... Ooh. What's the best move here? What's the best move here for black chat members? Trick question. Really a result of this move. It's not bishop g4. But rather it's bishop a6. Preventing him from castling. That is very annoying. It's rare that a bishop can stand like that, but if you notice your opponent hasn't castled yet. Yeah, so... Okay, plays bishop e3. It's a good move. Definitely a good move. Just developing. I want to go here, but I can't. So what do I play? Uh, I can't play e5. Play here. Looking for the sneaky sneak. Probably will do this. Is what I imagine, because he's going to be like, damn, I can't castle short, so let me castle long. And he has a good point. I don't, I don't know what he's going to do. Expect that. That's not, that's not even a mistake. That actually stopped my plan. Hmm. about this? Then queen f3. Black is better, but it's like, it's, it's hard to do something here. Because I can't play e5. That's it's got an annoying position. Oh, man. Okay, let's go rook b8. I mean, it's just, you gotta play a move. <laughs> I'm playing this because long term, if he castles this way, my rook will be on the open file. I mean, you can't spend an hour here, you know? Can't spend an hour. So I'm activating my rook. We'll see what happens. But he's playing well. Oh, until that move. That's not a good move. I, I think it's a little bit too aggressive. Uh, it's not a mistake, though. It's a little hard to punish this move. Okay. Let's teach you all about reroutes. Reroute. My knight cannot go forward. I mean, there is fine, but trade's not good. So I'll go back. I'm going to activate my knight this way. Maybe he castles this way. This is actually a very good game. These guys are playing well today. They woke up and they decided to fight Gotham. But now we see this justified. So what do I put on c4? Probably my horsey. Probably my horsey. Takes I take. But still, good game. When you know your opponent's next move? What do you mean? Who, know, who knows who knows whose opponent's next move? He knows my move? Are you accusing my opponent of <gasps> stream sniping? I don't think it really... Stream sniping doesn't help you if you're like 740. Because you still have to think for yourself. I think he's just playing well. Now I'm going to be able to push e5. I think... Well, now I can just push e5, but then he has this. Stop making good moves! It's so much easier when you make bad moves. I go here and then try to play e5. Goodness. Thank you. You like my you like the username? This kid crushed you. I'm only on, I'm I'm going to get through like 8 games or something. Well, on the stream I'm going to play all 20. YouTubers, this is why you should watch the live stream because I can't upload a 2-hour video. I just don't want that. Two hour videos don't do well in the algo. I keep it to like an hour, hour and 15 minutes. Cheater! Yes, exactly. Any player that lasts longer than 10 moves against the titled streamer is cheating. That's sarcasm. He's just playing well. Just let my opponent play. Stop accusing everybody. I'll tell you when someone's cheating. Don't worry. This is also one of the benefits of playing subscribers. It's that uh, you know that it, you're going to get a legitimate game and people are not, you know, you play your subs, they're not going to cheat because they subscribe to you. Do I own a green hoodie? No. Maybe? I don't know. Why? Okay. What's the main difference between an 1100 and a 1400? 300 points. Silly question. So what's the difference between a red car and a blue car? The color. Oh, you meant like, what, do you, what does it take to get to 1,400? Gaining 300 points. It's everything, man. Everything. Your openings have to be better. Um, your tactics have to be better. I mean, it, everything. But what should you focus on? Openings oftentimes can speed run your development. You can really just focus on like, 
climbs like these to try to replicate the style. But um uh, it's you know it's difficult to uh to narrow it down to one thing. Okay, let's simplify the position. Let's trade the rooks. Now here he's doing okay. He's down a piece, but he's doing okay. I mean, if you put two seven hundreds to play this position, God knows what's gonna happen. Let's take. Now the queen stops protecting the pawn. We come here. So now we have uh, an extra piece just for nothing. We were down a pawn before, but now we're fine. Knight a4 does not attack anything. I almost played here, and then I, that would have just hung a queen. So I'm just going to push my pawn. Seems like it's very difficult for me not to give away pieces today. I'm just going to... Oh no, he attacked my bishop, but he hung his queen. The pin. So Peter, thank you for the 15 months. That's check. So he can't even take my queen. I'll go here. He'll take my bishop. But I will check him and promote my pawn. Man, that was a good game though. I mean, everybody's playing well today. Just one move blunders, right? Push, and that's just made on the next move. GG though. Now, he played a very unique setup with f4. And he played like this because this is what I recommend in my e4 course. I think Bisk has my e4 course, so he goes for this setup. Now, if I don't play c6, d5 against this, uh, he can get a very good position. That was a very, that was a very, very uh, legitimate game by him. So, the c6, d5 thing, you know, I've been recommending bishop g4, but that just helps white with their development. You got to fight against this bishop. You want a good game. All right, infam cutie. Let's go. Next game, we're going to go for e6, b6. Please no cheats, thanks. Here we go. E6, B6. It's gonna be half half. Pick your poison. Or Gareth, thank you for the sub. Wow, we're accusing my opponent of cheating before the game even begins? That's impressive. So this is the point. Play like this. Which comes out this way. Yeah, I don't know what Spotify is doing today, so I'm just gonna. going on and we trade and now you play the move uh well, you have a few options but 97 is it cheating if you always avoid to do the best move that an engine gives you What an ethical conversation. Okay, now you castle and try to play f5. So you trade off your bishop for the knight, knight e7, e6, and you try to play f5. This setup is really good for like crap like this. And so it stops a lot of four move checkmate stuff. This is the whole point. So you're saying that you look at the engine while you play but you always play like the fourth or fifth option. I mean, it's probably still cheating because on your own, you wouldn't play those moves anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, now, queen e8, the second plan of the attack. Um, we sneak around this way. But this is a unique version of this. This is not going to be so simple. This is probably going to go into an endgame. But this bishop is very strong. And you bring the queen out this way. So the center is very solid for white, but your bishop is very strong. We don't have any immediate attacking moves, but... So... That is true, though. I don't know. Okay, let's be, uh, let's be very careful here. Let's slide this back. I've got bad intentions here. Got very bad intentions. I don't want a queen trade. I mean, a queen trade would have been okay. But I feel like checkmate is slightly better than a queen trade. I'm not saying I'm going to get it, but you're sort of seeing the whole point of this bishop is to live through the entire fight, to just stand on b7 and be very strong. But h6... 
Wait. Wow. Wow. This man trapped my queen. I am going to get two pieces for it. But wow, this is a this is a very interesting climb today. Maybe climbing down instead of up. So, how do you win a game of chess down a queen? Great question, ladies and gentlemen. First, you develop all your pieces. Now, what's actually interesting is I'm not completely lost. Also, what an idea. I mean, how did that, that's crazy. I mean, how are these guys 700? Guy found an idea that like, four digit players would struggle finding. That was really impressive. Okay. So he attacks my knight. Uh, I'm gonna go here. And I'm pinning myself, but this is my point. Now, for him, g4 is the best move. Because he needs to just create some sort of attack. And if he goes g4, I'm probably going to go something like knight e7 to solidify the pawn on f5. Uh, and then it's just a complicated fight. You know, g4, moving his bishop, doubling the rooks. Bishop b2, okay. Still gonna, yeah, this is just weird, though. Um, okay, he's trying to, like, roll in on me. So before he blocks out my bishop, I'm considering bishop e4. But I don't know about bishop e4. By the way, yes, g4 did hang a queen. Yes, it did. It did hang a queen. But I was just hoping maybe he was stream sniping. I was just very hopeful. I was like, if he goes g4, he actually traps his own queen. So... But he seems like a big boy 700 who can take care of his own pieces, unlike me. Okay, um, let's double up. Let's uh, double up. We're just going to create counterplay here. Our king is safe. Our pieces are more or less safe after we gave away a queen. Now we just got to play fast. One very important note for Blitz is that when you are in a losing position, if you speed up a little bit, uh, people can freak out a little bit. And you might still win the game despite, you know, not having any business doing so. Okay, what do we play here? Maybe here. Just looking, look, look, looking to pick up things where I can. Uh, I'm going to put my bishop on e4, maybe. I still want to go knight h4. Also, I want to go here. I'm still playing for a win, somehow. I don't know why I'm still playing for a win, but... Try my best. Try my best. Rook f2 probably, defends the pawn. Still have like sufficient counterplay. I mean, the thing is for him is he's playing without his pieces. He won my queen with some savant bishop maneuver, but... Big thoughts here from the opponent. Why was rook g4 bad? Because rook g4 he can take... And I can't take back. Rook g4 takes is impossible, but queen takes is actually possible. Because of uh, the, the pin. Let's see what we can get here. He's only got 40 seconds. Come on, man. You trap my queen. Justify it. Play fast. Uh-huh. That works, I think. Yes! Finally, he blunders his queen back. After a long thought. Check! And that's it. And we win. Now we're up. Now we're up. And when you give me material, I'm not going to lose it. But, Jesus. I mean, what a... That was not very well deserved on my part. Okay. Take the rook. Take the second rook. And forget that this game ever happened. Well, let's show you how to win it. Actually, rook h5 was better. But I'm going for these puns. Now you just eat. That's what you do. Everybody eats. I hope he doesn't go here, just locking in his bishop. That would be very sad. Check. Now we win the bishop. Man, this is kind of a tragic ending to a pretty good game on his part. So, the bottom line is that if you play e6, b6, 
You're going to lose a queen, so don't play it. No. Uh, the bottom line is... Um, he played very... I mean, all these guys today have really put up intense games. Really put up intense games. Um, and honestly, sometimes title players do blunder. Actually, you guys have seen me blunder two times this stream, which is really crazy. But to consolidate all your pieces and coordinate them in this fashion... Um, just shows you how to fight back, not just, you know, tilt and lose all your pieces. Uh, on a serious note, what I should have done instead of losing my queen is here I should have traded and played h6. And so if he plays knight f3, I actually have an option. I can potentially go like this and damage his pawn structure so he has very bad pawns, or just move on with my life like knight c6 and look to make this move possible at some point and play on the queen side. Oftentimes in these positions, you play on the queen side. That game was not the best uh advocation advocacy for this opening let's try to play e6 b6 a second time uh and not lose like a queen that game okay e6 hey it's smiko on the discord hey smiko we're still streaming yes we've only been on okay why is he thinking has he never... He's never seen the movie 6 Okay. Okay, so now we see the other point here. Is that we take and we win this pawn. You guys are going to get this a lot. Various positions where you win the pawn on e4. Now this guy's, this guy's playing more the style that I like to see at this level. But there is a trick here. Maybe he sees it. He'll probably go here though. Or here. That's what most people do. Now, you can take, and that's completely fine. I actually like to just bring the bishop back. Again, I want you to play your position through the bishop on b7. Like I said, there's a trick here. It's this. Don't blunder that. Hitting the g7 pawns. Now we play knight f6, and we have an extra pawn. However, the game is far from over, and white's position is very active, and we need to be careful. No. Do you guys want me to take that? Ah, to double his pawns? Nah. Let's go here. Because I, I actually think that doubling his pawns is dangerous for me. Now, d6 or d5? Tough question. I'm going to go d6 because, again, I want to maintain this diagonal open, but I do want to finish my development. And then at some point, I'm going to have to put pawns in the center. I think overall, e6, b6 has a steeper learning curve than the king's Indian because in many positions, it's not clear what the best move is. And it's, you, you just have to be very solid. Okay, so that's just a free pawn, right? I don't... That bishop is gobbling everybody. But he does open his pieces. Oh... I actually thought that this was pretty scary, but he takes well. Now I am just up two pawns, and he does not have enough material to attack me with, unfortunately. Oh. Uh, now I should take, but I won't. Again, I, I just want to keep my bishop. I want to play the game through the bishop. Next few moves will be this. Knight d7. When, also, when you play e6, b6, you castle long. Depends on the position. It's probably fine. But I think the King's Indian... Okay. I think the King's Indian, in general, has a little bit of an easier learning curve. Because sometimes in the opening, uh, playing with the pieces is easier than moving the pawns. I did not reach 2700 today. I think I peaked at 2685 or something. But soon. Can I show you the main strategies of the Smith Mora double gambit? Is it different than normal Smith Mora theory? Uh, sure. Also, thank you for the follow. Make sure to say hi though before demanding things. But not in not today. No, not in this video. <laughs> this is a video just for for Black. I'm not going to be playing any Sicilians because uh, I actually don't think uh, I'm going to be covering the Sicilian. But Okay, now we have to take. We don't have a choice. Maybe I'll make a video on Smith Morick double gamble. But... Okay. Any good refutation of that setup from the last game? Oh my god, is, this, is Spotify not working again? Spotify just keeps on breaking. 
Take. Okay. Of this. Emilio, appreciate your sub. Fork. John Burr, thank you for the prime. Okay, let's fork. Now, all of our pieces are third rank or, or second, sixth or seventh. I'm gonna start pushing. Take. So we are up four pawns. Probably we'll just go back. Now we'll go here. We will just push this pawn. That is going to be the remainder of this game. Back. The thing is, he just is stuck here. He can't make a lot of forward progress. That is the plan. See you, Empire. Do I understand? Uh, do I understand the song? What the song is saying? I do not, unfortunately. Okay. A five. A four. I I kind of laid out the plan already. Let's see if we can implement it. No. But it was already difficult. Now we come back. It's just really hard to stop this plan. I mean, the, the problem is that the, the, the damage from the opening has permeated. I got that from bigwords.com. Little tactic here. Queen is defending the knight. We play h5, hitting the queen. Now he has to play this move to maintain defense. He finds it. Nice. Rook okay, A4. Trying to come in this way. Protected by the knight. This guards this. Chat, what are we doing? What are we doing? You guys keep getting my attention. And remember, there was a guy who accused me of cheating. Because I always look this way. I'm looking at my stockfish. There's no chat here. I promise. It's all stockfish. Also, we just banned the guy uh, here on Twitch who was saying that I was only playing noobs. Or whom? Thank you for your prime sub. He was like, oh my gosh. There's something so sinister here. Guys, if I take this pawn, he goes check and mate. Oh my gosh, it is never too late to lose the game. The Anastasia's mate. Wow. I'm going to I'm going to go here just give my little cover and hide my king. Wow. 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 Oh man, that could have been very bad. Okay, let's give him a check. Locks, I got this. If he goes there, then I have rook c1. 
Maybe I could have done this last move. I could have probably done this last turn instead of in here. No, but oh, well, I saw rook g3. And then if h4, the same thing. Mate? Yes. That was a good. This game was a good example of the e6, b6 push. This was good. This was good. How did I see that? You always tunnel your plan on your... And you ignore your king? Well, your last question to me was, do I eat bugs? So... Maybe a little less bug eating, a little bit more covering your king. So... He blundered his e4 pawn. And then... I brought the bishop back. I stabilized. And, uh, well, he... The thing is, if he doesn't go d5, he never activates his bishop. But at the same time, <laughs> hey, Tierzu. Yo, YouTube, Tierzu is in the chat. We're recording. We're doing a rating climb. Uh, no, bugs are actually not bad. Uh, I've never had, but like there was a restaurant here in New York that, that did like ants. I think that's a, is that big in like Mexican cuisine? Ants, I think. I don't know what, I don't know what the word is, but... Um, so... We kind of stabilized here, but if you didn't play d5, what about like here, here? Ah, crickets. Oh, crickets is really interesting. So crickets, crickets are um, huge in Europe and Asia. There's like startups that are like only focusing on, uh, on cricket protein and it's like a fascinating industry. Uh, let's do, let's do a little bit of E, let's do one more E6, B6. I'm, I'm still, you two people, I'm, I'm trying to find the balance of how much King's Indian, how much E6, B6 I want to play, but I'm going to do both just for you guys, so, um. Okay, now this is again not very good because I have this, but let me play Bishop B4, let's see if he also misses. Man, Johnny, look at this, man. Johnny. Oh no, Johnny, god damn it. Can't go here. Two people with this e4 blunder. Uh, you are gonna win this pawn a lot. This is the one benefit of playing the system. Okay, let me take. Now, friends, don't take this pawn. Don't take this pawn, okay? Is they're going to go rook g1, and I don't want you guys to get obliterated. Bring the bishop back. Let this bishop do the deed, and then go away. Also, don't go here, because then he just takes the queen. Okay? No, don't do it. Knight f6, solid. Now, last time there was a bishop there. Now the bishop is there, the knight is there, the knight's not there. Let's see what that changes about the position. So... Okay, people in, okay, let's attack the bishop. See what he wants. Now the goal for us is not to play g5, it's again to play d6 and put this knight on d7. We want to, we want to be solid boys and we don't want to block in our light squared bishop. Okay. So this is the game plan. Here here. It's a it's a slow crawl. I can castle. But last time someone asked me if I should castle queenside in e6, b6, so maybe this time I'll go for a queenside castle. It's not very good. I mean, I, I really should just keep it simple here. Uh, I'm not worried about this. I'm also not worried about a sacrifice. Okay, so yeah, obviously I can't take, and he wants to take me. I can't take because of the pin, so I'm just going to push. And now I am solid boy, but he has blocked out my bishop, and I'm very sad. R.I.P. b7 bishop. Now I might not even castle that way. Or maybe I will. I'm queen e7. Thing is, I'm so dedicated to the cause here. I, I, I really don't like it, though, because he's just, he just attacked my king, but... H3 I'm not too scared of, so... I said I would do it, I'm going to do it, and then I'm going to attack his king, but I'm not happy. This is a little bit too dangerous. Okay. 
Get him out. So this actually helps me a lot. He really should be, he, he should be attacking me. See what I'm doing to him? He needs to do it to me. If he doesn't do it to me, I'm going to run him over on the side of the board. Just absolutely run him over. So having said that, the fact that I even got this move already is just, it, it's a problem. Yeah, I'm going to take... And that lets me propel a th another pawn. So we have a very picturesque opposite side castling attack here. This is a huge problem and his, he's just never... He's not getting off the ground here. I mean, g4... Okay. Oh, but there's a trick. Let's see if he sees it. Oh, he saw it. Damn. Can't take. But I do have this. At least I have that, but he did see it. Oh, Tirzu is suggesting a song. Let's see. Back up. Yeah, it is very satisfying. There's very few things more satisfying than a nice chess attack. And that is why Cutie Cinderella called all of us virgins. I'm not even sure she's wrong. Shana Tova, Shana Tova to you as well. Yeah, so this is... Uh... Unfortunately, again, since he never got an attack on my king, my attack worked. Now, if there's anything that you want you get from this from this climb, it's that if you castle on opposite sides, go attack them with your pawns, with pieces, they will not know how to react. Like that really, yeah, we just hit the five hour mark of streaming. Um, that's baby, those baby hours. Five hours is, is baby hours. Yes, X Warren. You see what X Warren just wrote in the chat? It's gonna pop up. You guys should follow me on Instagram. We, we just hit 10,000 Twitter followers yesterday. Instagram's at three. Instagram, I mean, we made the Instagram like a month ago, so, you know. Go on there if you want to see, uh, you know, me in leggings doing yoga poses and other things that you do on Instagram. That's basically all you do on Instagram. You just take, like, really, f like, photographic poses with, like, you know, well-fitting clothing that helps you show off your voluptuous chest rating. Now, under normal circumstances, I would trade queens here. But I don't want to because I have an attack on the king. So I'm not going to be trading. All right, so I'm going to play uh, rook here. So yeah, real Gotham chess on Instagram. Link in the bio. I mean, link in the description. See, that's, that, that's, that's, that's Instagram lingo. Okay, I, I check. He's going to get away. He is getting away. Now, how do I prevent him from getting away is the question. Let's bring down this rock. This doesn't have a thread, but this does. And also, all these squares are covered, so his queen can't actually infiltrate to create counterplay. Uh, we also started this game with three minutes, and we're going to end it with three and a half. This is the five seconds of bonus time. Um, but, you know, beyond the opening, obviously the whole point of this climb is to, okay, is to clean up winning positions. Check, and we pick up the rope. So he does not have many pieces remaining. We're going to take some pawns, avoid stalemate. And that is that. It's going to be five pawns versus the king. Make sure not to stalemate. Yeah, I don't want to BM. I would BM if it's streaming, but I'm not going to BM. I'm just going to make a queen. Actually, two queens. Two queens. Beginners need two queens usually. It's the easiest. 
Let's go. Goes this way, I promote. Okay, goes there. Okay, very important. Don't stalemate. Don't stalemate. Check. 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 Is that mate? Look, no hands. No hands, no hands. No hands. I think I just calculated everything. Look at this. Nice. Oh, Gotham flexing on beating an 800. <gasps> That's not a flex. I'm just pre-moving checkmate. That Everybody relax. That was cool. Uh, that was a good game. But again, when you blunder early, it's hard to get back. So, um, we just played solid. Like I said, I mean, I didn't do anything crazy. I won the E4 pawn. I finished my development the right way with the knights, the pawn this way. Uh, and then I closed the center. And then I just long castled. And, um, you know, we just mobilized on this side. Like, literally, all we did is just push on that side of the board. Like, nonstop. Just push, 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 push until we crashed all the way through. So he should have played A4, A5. It's just what, sh what he should have done. Um, I'm going to play, uh, play one or two more games for YouTube. Sorry, guys. If you want to catch the entire thing, got to make sure to go to Twitch. Okay, gone nine oh gone zero zero nine. You are not in live chess. Toaster, toaster, I'm skipping you. Gone. Got to get in live chess. I'm going straight to toaster. G three. Wow. I mean, against this, you really should take the center. Is what you should do. But I'm gonna play the king's Indian. I'll play d six. Knight f six. G six. Bishop g seven. Oh no! Is it king's Indian versus king's Indian? Oh my god! Oh, it's Tufian Kettle versus king's Indian. Yeah, let's play knight c six. Now, what I would... Oh my god. What the hell do I do against this? <laughs> this this is, is like staring in a mirror and trying to punch the mirror. I mean, I, I don't... Okay, I mean, like I said, against this, what I really think you should do is take the center against the standard stuff. But if you always want to play King's Indian... Um, okay, let's take the center, obviously, e5. Now we'll see what he does. Now, this is not where the bishop belongs. This bishop belongs here because it, it can attack this diagonal. But this bishop can never attack this diagonal. I put my bishop there because where else am I going to develop it? Okay, I'm going to play a uh, bishop e6. I'll show you guys how to immediately dismantle the white position here. Play h6. So, think about King's Indian. When your center is closed in King's Indian positions, like this, eight pawns each, you want to play this move f5. That is how you are going to mobilize your attack. You also would like to trade off their bishop. Because that bishop is an extremely important defender of their king. And you do these things by moving this knight and then playing the move f5. But the center has to be closed. It has to be. Because, hmm, that's actually a very good move. Surprisingly. Did I say that? Okay. I'm going to play an advanced move. I'm sorry. I have to do this. If I make this big trade... And then his queen ends up there. We had this in the first game of the series. Second game. Bishop on the queen. But I can't move this knight anywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here. The knight is instrumental in defending the center. And by pinning it to the queen, I remove it from the defense of the center. So another good move there was bishop h3. But... I need to do it in such a way where... You know what else I could have done? I could have taken once, but not the second time. One time, but not the second time. And then continue with my plan. At least the way now, if he takes, I put the knight in the center. Uh, and I put some pressure here. And uh, it's all good. Do I ever play the Hustlers at Washington Square Park? No, I don't. Uh, mainly because of COVID and also because I'm like a thousand points stronger than them. So... Um. Okay, now we take, and this loses a guard. Do we take with the pawn or the knight? I'm going to take with the pawn, because he's going to go here. I'm going to go here. He's going to go here. I'm going to go here. He's going to go there. I'm going to take, he'll resign. Okay, same thing is going to happen. So, this move 
Hits knight on e5. And hits both these pieces. Now he has a bigger problem. So there's a lot of tactics that arise here. Right. So that's just the free knight. So lost in all this is just queen takes b5 and it's, it's GG. I mean, peace. I mean, oh man. Oh no. He came back for the pawn. Oh no. He came back for the pawn and it's even worse now. So that was just literally, we got out of the opening. I started putting pressure on him. And we won immediately, like literally immediately. Like the first time, the, like we it was like Hamzat, uh, Hamzat Shemaev versus this Gerald guy. Just one punch knockout, you know, <laughs> over the top, you know, straight under the arm, easy. Okay, this is what's gonna happen. Take, here, here, checkmate. Prediction, correct. Double check and mate. And, um, yeah. So, really what I recommend against such an approach where they don't put anything in the center of the board is take the center. But if you really want to stick to your opening, you take the center and then you do this. And by the way, I played h6, so he couldn't go knight g5. Lost in all this is why I played h6. It was not a waste of a move, but I don't want him to go knight g5. If you don't want them to go knight g5 at all, you can put the bishop on d7 and go for the same plan. So use this plan to your advantage. And here is the most advanced move. I play a slow move. And had he taken, I would have done this with pressure on this knight. Very, very tough for him to move here because, for example, queen e2 uh, doesn't do anything, actually. Just straight up doesn't do anything. He's still in this pin. Bring my rook or something. But in the game, you know, he, uh, he uh, blundered his d4 pawn, which will happen a lot. And then immediately there were more losses. All right, YouTube people. We're going to wrap up here for the first part. Uh, there's going to be more on that side, and you can check out the playlist whenever you're watching this. If you're watching this before the other parts drop, Twitch, say bye to YouTube. Say bye. Bye-bye. We're going to keep on going here. We're going to keep playing these folks. There's like seven or eight people still in the, in the queue. Um, and yeah, if you're not yet subbed on YouTube, make sure to do that. And there's a lot of other content for you to enjoy. If you like my instructive content and you want to buy an openings course, link is in the description. Also join the Discord. A lot of those people down there in the chat, they're in the Discord. We have like 7,500 people. So it's a nice chess community you can take part in. Ta-ta for now. And I will see you in part two or in another video.